Hi guys, it's Autumn Skylar Sings here. So you're all probably wondering where I've been and why I haven't been posting videos for I don't even know how long. <laughs> A lot of months. Yeah. Um well I'm I'm going to oops. <laughs> I'm going to explain what kind of happened. This is going to be a longer video and I'm only going to be talking during it, so bear with me. <laughs> it all basically started in February um, that I knew something was wrong because I got a migraine that didn't go away. Um, at first, we thought maybe it was nothing, but then, you know, a couple of weeks went by and my mom thought that maybe it was a rebound headache from having Advil and then the Advil, my body getting used to it, and so she took me off of the Advil and we went back on the Advil and then, um, we decided to, you know, get a neurologist involved, to get a professional to figure out what the heck is going on, but we weren't able to get a professional involved until May, so I had to spend a long time just kind of sitting there suffering, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for this magical neurologist, um, who turned out not to be that magical. Basically what happened was I got an MRI that I actually had to force, sort of. He said that I that he didn't think anything would be found on an MRI and that everything was fine. Um, <laughs> but we found out the hard way that he was all sorts of wrong. So I got the MRI and after, you know, fighting for it, saying, I, I think I need this, something's not right. Um, he got the MRI back. Well, we had the MRI, and then we had to wait a m month until he... Yeah, we had to wait a month. It was June when he actually ha had us have an appointment to go over the MRI. It was It was very, very weird, but also neurologists are kind of booked. <laughs> they're, they're always, always booked, it seems, is what we found at least. And when we got in, he told us, everything's fine. Um, this, this, this is fine. Nothing, nothing's on this MRI. Um, you're perfectly fine. It's probably just, you know, cluster headaches or he didn't say cluster headaches. Um, he just said, maybe you just have migraines. And, you know, you're just going to have migraines forever. Which I knew was wrong, but I I didn't say anything. Because he I'd already tried, and he wasn't listening. He wasn't having it. He just thought I was paranoid. Um, and then it was June 12th. Yeah, June 12th. I remember, because it was two days after my mom's birthday. And actually the day before, this kind of goes along with what we think happened, we actually hit a baby deer um, on the way to birthday dinner, which, oh, it was bad. It was, it was very bad because then I, we couldn't go to dinner. But anyway, this we kind of think was a catalyst for my headaches getting so bad. The force forward. Because the next day on June 12th, right after I had my vocal recital, I had the worst headache. I, one of the worst headaches I've ever had in my entire life. But at that point, it was the worst headache. I was beside myself. I was sobbing. I, I couldn't do anything but sob and scream. And so we went to the ER. And we were waiting around for a while. And then we were admitted there. But then we were told that they didn't deal with neurology, children's neurology or, or something like that. So we were transferred over to another hospital and it wasn't until then that when we gave 
this neurologist that was there, the CD with my MRI on it, that he looked at it and said, whoa, your guy was wrong. This all has to do with what, you know, you guys thought, which is the Chiari 1 malformation. <laughs> I kind of just like built it up to that. It's not usually that big of a thing. It can be, like in my case, but sometimes people have it and they don't even know they have it. They don't even have headaches related to it or they have very mild headaches and things work for it, like Advil and Tylenol and things of that nature. But for me, no didn't work like that. Basically what a Chiari 1 malformation is, is it means in your brain you have a little bit in the back that's called cerebral tonsils. It's part of your brain and mine dangled very severely. It dangled against the brain stem and was pushing against it or something like that. Um, I know I'm laughing, but it, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it wasn't humorous. I'm not sure why I'm laughing. Anyway, we had that figured out and they told us that we would need, well not we, that I would need neurosurgery. And um, originally they had scheduled it for three or four days from then. But then I had what we like to call like an exorcist type thing where you're like your body, basically what it looked like was that my, I was like put in those old movies where you're pos the girl or guy is possessed and they're flinging their body upwards and arching their back and stuff. That's kind of what was going on with me. I was having these fits and that's what I would do. Not that I'd lift off the bed or anything, that would be, um, that'd be a feat. But I would be just sobbing, screaming, my, I, would, I was arching my back, and so they rushed me and had emergency neurosurgery. Um, started at, I think, 10 o'clock is when they made the first incision, they told us, and then it ended at 2. So it was four hours. Um, my dear boyfriend, love of my life, he and his mother, they had been with us all day and they stayed until 1. They left an hour before I got out of surgery, but it was only because he had school the next day or I'm pretty sure he would have stayed. He's like that, and I'm so lucky to have him as a support through all of this. So I had the surgery done, and you know, I, I have a, an incision all the way back here. It's very pretty. Um, but that didn't solve the problem. In fact, after the surgery, we noticed I had spasticity in my legs. My legs were just doing the herky jerky. Um, we like to say that I had, or I still do, have jazz legs. Um, and as that was happening and as it got worse and worse, they attributed it, or at least my neurosurgeon attributed it to, I had these two, uh, they're, yeah, two syrinxes that I have. What a syrinx is, is since my brain part, the cerebral spinal, no, the messing up my words, since the, no, cerebral tonsils were pushing against my brainstem, it stopped the flow of cerebral spinal fluid, cerebral fluid, it's a fluid, it stopped the flow of a fluid that should be fluiding down your, down your spine. And so what happens with syrinx is, is that basically that fluid, it found a pocket in my spinal cord, or I guess two pockets, and it just kind of stayed there. And it's still there. It's great. What 
Syrinxes, Syrinxes, people can have them and not, you know, not even feel them or know they're there or even, you know, care about them and everything's fine. But with my Syrinx, it went from being asymptomatic to symptomatic. And, well, some of, while well, some of my doctors attributed my Syrinxes to the spasticity because that is common, no, it's, well, it's not common, but, I mean, when you have spasticity in your legs and you have a syrinx, it's the common thought that people have, because syrinxes can cause spasticity. Not usually, but they can. Anyway, um, not to go in that whole debate about what they think is causing it, but I have it, the spasticity, um, they realized I, I couldn't stand. Um, I went from being able to stand with a walker to not being able to at all because the spasticity in my legs had gotten so bad. So I was sent inpatient rehab rehabilitation. Inpatient rehabilitation. And it lasted six weeks, I think. Six weeks? Five weeks? Six weeks? Not good with numbers. I think it was somewhere around there. And that was torture. And I didn't get a lot of bang. I didn't get bang for my buck. I really didn't. Because I kind of came out of there worse. I got out of there end of July. And everything was just worse. Um, they told me that they would have me walking. No. I'm not walking now. The only walking I can do is on my knees. Um, I can't even stand up with the support of a walker, which we have, so I have a wheelchair. But we're working on it now. And now that I'm home, I have outpatient, and they're working to kind of fix the herky-jerkies. And I have to say that I am working pretty damn hard, too. And it seems to be working. It seems to be going well. Despite, you know, the fact that I'm still not walking and that I still have the, the spasticity. Um, as you can probably tell, there has been a little bit of cognitive... Um, not damage, but kind of some neurological um, issues that have come with the surgery and all of that. Um, so I'm having a lot of difficulty forming kind of concise spots. Is that the right word? I don't even, it doesn't even sound like a word, but I think it's a word. I think that's the word that I'm looking for. It's a lot of that going on where I had, the, basically the way that I describe it is I used to have the entire dictionary in my head and I could just pick a word and just know what it meant and just say it. But I'm having difficulty finding most words. My parents say that they haven't seen a lot of change in me, but I know I have because especially when I'm r reading aloud something, it's come it comes out stuttery, slow. It's it's just not good. <laughs> it's it's sad. Um, but we're working hard. The doctors say that I should be able to, you know walk again. They don't see any reason why with physical therapy and all of that I shouldn't be able to walk again. So that's good. High hopes for that. Pain-wise, things have stayed the same with my head, but my back, that wasn't hurting before we went to the hospital and now it's, it's every day. Constantly. All the pain is just constantly. At this point, this is like a world record breaking migraine because it 
it hasn't gone away <sighs> since February and I, I'm worried that it'll go and it'll hit the year mark. I, I'm, that's what I'm worried about. I don't want to have a year-long migraine. That's, that's not, not my goal. Um, but we're going to be trying new things. Biofeedback, which is basically like reteaching your brain to, to calm your breathing down when it, and stuff when you're in pain. And monks use it, so um, hopefully it'll, it'll work for me. And we want to do acupuncture. That that should be interesting at least. I'm a little nervous. But at this point, I'm willing to try anything to get better. So, yeah. I think that about summarizes my summer from hell. As I like to call it. Because I just kind of spent summer in hospitals going in and out and in and out and having pain spikes and having to go back in. It's not been fun and I'm hoping that things will be better. I think I can do it. I think that I can do anything I set my mind to. And I like to think that this is just another stepping stone. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I mean, not that you would enjoy hearing about my tale of woe, but that you at least found some glimmer of hope as I have in all of this. And if you guys are interested in knowing more information about Chiari 1 and syrinxes, or as the condition is technically called, syringomyelia, there will be some links to professionals who will probably give you a much better explanation than I, I could. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever you want to do. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.